A 40-year veteran of the industry, Gilles Ouellette started his career in academia, teaching investment management at the University of Western Ontario. He then joined Burns Fry, where he became executive vice president in 1993. With the subsequent mergers of Nesbitt Thompson and Bank of Montreal, he reached more and more senior positions. Since 2019, he has served as chairman of BMO Asset Management. We talked to him at the Museum of Contemporary Art, his favorite philanthropy. As an investment advisor, and that's how I came into this business, as an investment advisor, you're building your own business, okay? You could grow it as large as you wanted to, and you didn't need any capital because the firm provided you with the capital. And I always, always saw myself as entrepreneurial, as a business builder, and it really appealed to me. Burns Fry, where I was working, uh, asked me to run the, the Toronto office. Uh, Burns Fry was uh, largely an institutional house, but they wanted to start building up to it. At that time, they called the retail side of the business, which really what we refer to now as the private client side of the business. And uh, <clears throat> of course, Toronto was going to be the hub, the biggest market, etc. And they wanted me to spend all my time doing this, like devote all of my time. In 1994, Burns Fry, we sell Burns Fry to the Bank of Montreal to merge it uh, with their Nesbitt Thompson to create Nesbitt Burns. And uh, the person who had orchestrated all this was Brian Steck, Brian Steck who ran Nesbitt Thompson for, for the Bank of Montreal. I think where I had the most impact really was in creating the wealth management part of the bank. I mean, which turned out to be the last kind of 20 years. When I was presented with that, uh, with that idea, you know, I was thinking, I mean, you work your whole career to get in the position where and people are really motivated to grow this business. We had, we had the, you know, we could use the balance sheet of the bank and the bank was very motivated to grow this. And it's like an artist, right? They gave us, there's a blank canvas and say, go ahead and grow it, right? And it was, I, and I saw this, and I saw myself, you know, just a, you know, be pretty presumptuous, but a little bit like an artist, okay? I was, I was uh, given this canvas and go ahead and, paint something, and I think that's what we did. When I think of Joe, I, what I think of really in, in the business context is the um, incredible growth that has occurred since his days of managing a couple hundred brokers um, at Burns Fry, where the assets under management would have been sort of single digit billions of dollars. And when he um, moved on to retire or rewire, as we all do um, uh, here, I think he left the business with something like 1,200 uh, financial advisors and assets under management, assets under administration through a trillion dollars. He had great long-term vision and he was the leader in uh, BMO acquiring wealth management companies, not just in Canada, but internationally, in the United States, in the UK, and also in China. So uh, that was a great contribution he made, not only to BMO, but also the whole industry, because he, he was a role model for people in the wealth management business. Jill is one of these people who has an extraordinary quiet confidence about him. And underneath that quiet confidence, he's very competitive and he's been an extraordinary contributor to the building of our franchise, whether you look at asset management uh, growth or whether you look at our investments in China. Um, Jill's been a, an incredible contributor to our bank's agenda. But on a personal level, he's also a great leader. He's somebody who's very approachable, he's very relatable. Uh, folks uh, find, find uh, lots of time for him and he finds lots of time for other people as well. So he's been, uh, he's been the full package around our place for a long time. His contributions to the community, particularly the arts community, but beyond that, but if you look at the arts community, the AGO, MOCA, and on and on it goes, Jill has been an unbelievable supporter of that community and we're very proud of him for that as well. And my deepest, deepest commitment is to this gallery, the Museum of Contemporary Art. This has been the object of our philanthropy also. I mean, we've, you know, we've helped out, uh, we've helped financially, uh, but we have a great institution here. I mean, this, is, uh, this, this institution started in 1993, okay? 
And um, it's always been the hub for artists. So everywhere they were, they start off in North Europe, then Queen Street West, now we've moved to, uh, to Sterling Road. And it puts Toronto on the map. I mean, Toronto is a destination for art. And part of it is, this is the only contemporary art museum in, in the city. So it's close to our heart. Well, being inducted into the Investment Industry Hall of Fame, it came as a huge surprise and very humbling. Uh, because it's uh, our peers okay, that I've decided that, I guess, that I've had a good career, that I've had a productive career. And, um, you know, I might have thought that I had a good career, but I gather other people were watching and that's what they're saying. You've had a pretty good career, you know, because it's a very, if you look at all the inductees in the Hall of Fame, it's a very unique group of people. I mean, it's, I'm, uh, to be, uh, to be associated with this group of people is very humbling. <laughs>